Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. <clears throat> I'm coming to the. Hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yes. Proteinuric to non-proteinuric nephropathy in diabetes mellitus. The paradigm shift. Well, diabetes mellitus and nephropathy. Diabetes is a pervasive <clears throat> a cause of end-stage kidney disease in Western population and a major contributor to CKD epidemic in the worldwide. Nephropathy affects 20 to 30 percent of diabetics in the Western studies. Advanced renal disease attributable to diabetic disease accounts for 44% in USA and 30% in Europe. The reduced GFR is more common among diabetic patients than in non-diabetic subjects, but also revealed that a large number of such patients will never show levels of proteinuria above the traditional definition of over-diabetic nephropathy of more than 500 mg per gram per deciliter during the life of course. Well, coming to Indian data, the early work on diabetic renal disease was done on the AGCs of WHO between 70 and there was a study done on the AGCs of WHO between 75 to 78. And they have taken albuminuria, a significant albuminuria or serum creatine more than 1.5 milligram decibel as a criteria for diagnosis. And you can see an age group of uh, six to zero to six years duration, the, the prevalence was 9.3 to 4.7. As duration increased, it went from to 23% in male to 13.6% in the female. And Indian Medical Council <coughs> ICMR study on nephropathy also showed 15.4% in males and 13.9% in females. Now, coming to the diabetic nephropathy and the uh, ICMR conducted study I've already referred to, the diabetic nephropathy study was observed in 12.2% of males and 5.3% of females in the first group. 18% and 87.7% .7 and 22.5% and 705 in females. Here, the female prevalence was less uh, with the duration of more than 14 years. If you look at the diabetic registry maintained by the Indian Society of Nephrology, they found that diabetes mellitus is the cause of CKD in 31.2% of cases. Now, coming to the morbidity profile and cause of mortality, which we have studied and published uh, in 2017, while well, only duration of diabetes was strongly associated with nephropathy and neuropathy, 18.6% patient patients died due to diabetes related complications. Cardiovascular death, although was the dominant, but chronic kidney disease, the cause of death in hospitalized patients amounted to 12.1%. So, next to CVD was diabetic nephropathy as the cause of death. <clears throat> Now, this book is a very, is a Bible <clears throat> for an kidney disease. You know, it's by none other than Carl Eric Morenschen, which was published way back in 94. And if you come to his analysis on definition of diabetic renal disease in insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, as it was called then, if you look at the hyperfiltration, microalbuminuria, clinical proteinuria, structural changes, relationship of structural damage, to microalbuminuria and clinical proteinuria was well established. If you look at NIDDM in the same book, in the same book, albuminuria and renal disease in NIDDM patients, you can see that is mentioned clearly. It has hence become clear that the codes of complications and the implications of microalbuminuria differ in several respects between two types of diabetics because in type two diabetics or NIDDM they found it correlated more with macro with endothelial dysfunction than with frank uh, glomerulonephritis or diabetic glomerulopathy. Now, coming to diabetic from an altered renal hemodynamics, if you look at the glomerulus, increased sodium chloride and glucose filtration takes place, which leads to afferent vasodilatation. Then, in the descending loop of Andrella, again increased sodium chloride reabsorption with glucose reabsorption. And an ascending loop of analyte that is decreased distal delivery of sodium chloride because most of them are absorbed here, consequent to glucose reabsorption. And then come to the efferent vessel that is vasoconstriction because there is lesser volume here. And this leads to efferent vasoconstriction. Thus, the end result is afferent vasodilatation and efferent vasoconstriction in the glomerular vessels. Now, proteinuria diabetic kidney disease and <clears throat> To look at a study, long term study between 1980 80 to 94, 99 to 2004, and 2005 to 8, and the prevalence of diabetic kidney disease defined as diabetes with albuminuria reduced GFR or both 
increased over time from 2.2% to 3.3% between 2005 and 8. And overall CKD increased from 14.9% to 17.7%, whereas albuminuria tended to decrease. So this is the bottom line of the study, which I'll be emphasizing subsequently. Observation in the same database extended to 2014 substantially confirmed these findings. The prevalence of albuminuria decreased progressively over time from 20.8 to 15.9%. In contrast, the prevalence of reduced EGFR increased from 9.2 to 14.1 with a similar pattern of severely reduced EGFR. And if you look at the glycemic control and renal endpoint study in diabetic cohorts, if you look at the DCCT with HB1 say from 7.3 to universal 9.1, reduced microproteinuria of 7.3, addict and DCCT, renal protection effective persisted, microalbumin risk reduced from 45%, UK PDS mostly in type diabetes or NIDDM, HB1C 7.4, 7.0, 7.9, reduced <coughs> risk reduction in microalbuminuria, advanced and accord, all are almost similar findings. Thus, Microalbuminia in Indian subjects with type 1 and type 2 diabetics, study from Mumbai on type 1 diabetics revealed that microalbuminia is more common in males other than individuals and older and in older individuals and subjects with long duration of diabetes, as microalbuminia is a marker of progression of diabetic nephropathy in type 1. On the other hand, microalbuminia in type 2 diabetics is found to be a marker of generalized vascular endothelial dysfunction. They were published in JAPI 99. In our own study, we found <coughs> This was also published in 98 and subsequently 1998, 99. Proteinuria, a commoner and more related to glycemic status, improvement in proteinuria consequently to tight amyloid glucose control in type 2 diabetes. Now coming to the paradigm shift. A historical trend showing improvement in glycemic control over time in large database and the widespread use of antagonist of running angiotensin system. The ARBs and AC inhibitors may have contributed to the decrease in prevalence of glomerular lesion and allowed emergence of other types of renal lesion affecting the interstitium and vasculature, that is, lesion that may cause progressive renal damage without triggering proteinuria or producing just mild to moderate increase in the levels of biomarkers. Now, look, this, <clears throat> I'll draw attention to this interesting slide. Two different phenotypes of proteinuria, micro and macro, and albuminuria and EGFR reduction. If you look at it is in diabetic population, if you look at the normal albuminuric, the GFR decretion is much earlier. Microalbuminuric, it is a little longer, and frank proteinuric is the longest. So the impression we have that normal albuminuric will not have a decretion in EGFR and eisen creatinine is probably the paradox, and that is the in slide. Now, coming to International Diabetes Federation and Internet Society of Nephrology, including 30,000 type 2 diabetic patients from 33 countries, it is a very robust study, it's a multi nation, multi center study, found the overall prevalence of normal micro and macro albuminuria to be 51, 39, and 10% respectively with wide racial differences. So, normal albuminuria was 51 versus 10% of microalbuminuria. The absence of proteinuria, a reduced GFR is observed in about one diabetic patient out of five, a risk not dramatically different from the that resisted in patients with microalbuminuria. Proteinuria cannot be considered as a marker of diabetic nephropathy top foot. Rather, proteinuria in diabetics has to be seen as an indicator of glomerulism only. Now coming to non-proteinuria, proteinuria is a distinguished feature of glomerulonephritis. In type 2 diabetes, non proteinuric diabetic kidney disease is more frequent than proteinuric kidney disease, diabetic kidney disease. However, substantial research efforts are still needed. ESAD via, <coughs> via mechanism pathways other than proteinuria. So, the risk factors that might trigger a progressive decline in the glomerular filter in the absence of proteinuria versus aplonuria include hypertension, obesity, high serum triglycerides. So these are the associated findings which can lead to non-proteinuric diabetic nephropathy. Glomerular filtration and alteration that is not confined to diabetes being commonly seen also in early stages of hypertension. Now coming to risk factors and mechanisms of non-proteinuric renal disease, 
hypertension leading to tubular interstitial inflammation obesity overweight leading to alterations in the adipokinins and secondary pro inflammatory changes we know obesity per se is a pro inflammatory state in the body high serum triglycerides through insulin resistance can also lead to alteration and, and increase of uh, pro inflammatory cytokines a we did a study study of markers of atherosclerosis including insulin resistance in chronic renal disease diabetic and non diabetics if you look at the uh, this is a uh, retinal interference and this is a uh, Uh, carotid intimamedial thickness you can see the carotid intimamedial thickness and <coughs> was positively negatively correlated with gfr with increase in creatinine with increased creatinine clearance and similarly huma ir was also <coughs> negatively uh, was positively correlated with this and to summarize these two findings comparison of various parameters between three groups revealed that insulin resistance beta cell dysfunction dyslipidemia C reactive protein, uric acid, and carotid intimamedial thickness were significantly higher among diabetic kidney disease patients than controls. Further, a greater degree of insulin resistance, beta cell dysfunction, kidney diabetic kidney disease than non-diabetics. Now, <clears throat> reabsorption of albumin escapes from the glomerular filter by the cubulin megalin complex and renal tubular cells sets into motion in a protoxic pathway. whereby the complex cubulin megalin albumin activates the uh, reactive oxygen species and answers the synthesis of nuclear factor kappa b controls cytokine cascade up regulates endothelial wall transforming into factor beta and ultimately leads to a tubular intestinal atrophy fibrosis and renal dysfunction this is how the non proteinic mechanism works so what we have been only focusing is glomerulopathy till now looking at the microalbuminuria looking at the alpha and beta microglobulins but the entire pathology also has been changed or more the proximal tumular pathology lupovenal pathology distal tubular pathology and collecting pathology the markers for them in nutshell are for glomerular pathology in diabetic kidney disease definitely we look for microalbuminuria alpha 1 and beta 2 microglobulins cystatin c for interstitial for interstitial inflammation and epithelial damage alpha 1 antitrypsin uh, tumor and growth factor beta MPC1, <coughs> VEGF, NT pro BNP, endostatin, total nucleus factor, TNF alpha, TNF2, etc. For proximal tubule, HIM1, NGAL, FAB. For loop of Henry, osteopontin. For distal loop, osteopontin, and for collecting co co peptin. Besides the evaluation of levels and status, expression of nuclear factor kappa B can reflect regarding activity of cytokine cancer. So we studied the association of nuclear factor kappa B1 gene polymorphism with inflammatory markers in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus with or without renal disease. Well, this is a busy slide. I just tried to draw your important uh, points. If you look at the, these are type 2 diabetics without nephropathy. These are type 2 diabetics with nephropathy. These are healthy controls. Naturally, you can, in the nephropathy group, you can find the urine albumin creatinine ratio was very high. MM was very high. the urian um, uh, monocytic hematopoietic factor was high the tnf alpha was high if you look at the uh, gene polymorphism in uh, healthy controls diabetics without nephropathy and diabetic with nephropathy the most common snp was found is deletion and deletion in healthy controls in diabetic nephropathy it was insertion and insertion insertion and insertion <laughs> Thus, paradigm shift in understanding diabetic kidney disease. Accumulating data suggests that the proportion of diabetic kidney disease patients without proteinuria is substantial. In a survey made in the framework of the third National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey of Nyans Three, as many as 37 percent of patients with GFR below 30 mL per minute per per 1.73 meter square body surface had no albuminuria. I beg your kind attention to this. Among patients with type 2 diabetes with GFR less than 60 mm mL, includes 30 percent were in all albuminuric. So, friends, ladies and gentlemen, glomerulitis are the most often proteinuric diseases. The incidence rate of ESKD due to glomerulonephritis plateaued in 1990s and since then has declined steadily because of the use of antihypertensives, especially. The ACE inhibitors and the ARBs. 
Marcus, excuse me, Marcus of interstitial involvement leading to non-proteinuric diabetic kidney disease has to be evaluated at an early stage. More exhaustive genetic study in different population groups will guide the future management diabetes as we saw in the WHO International <coughs> Society of Nephrology study involving 33 countries that is variation in proteinuria. Thank you very much for the patient hearing.